Hi, I'm Christian Mackin, and this is a video about my adventure uh, to Mount Whitney with my daughter, Lauren Mackin, on May 8th, 2017. We left Orange County to head up to Lone Pine, California. Ended up getting there actually maybe a little bit after midnight and camped at Whitney Portal uh, Trailhead at about 8,500 feet. We do that to help uh, acclimate ourselves and, and get our bodies kind of used to being at high altitude. In the morning, we uh, came down into town, had breakfast at the Mount Whitney restaurant, which incidentally is uh, just across the street from the Mount Whitney hostel, which we'll end up uh, going to after the hike to catch a shower uh, before we go for lunch. After breakfast, about eight o'clock, we headed over to the ranger station to pick up our permits. And just across the street there uh, is a good view of Mount Whitney over the Alabama hills. Driving up uh, Whitney Portal, there's an even better view uh, up through the canyon where we're going to be hiking of, of Mount Whitney uh, in this picture uh, in the upper right hand side. We actually uh, approached the summit uh, from the back side uh, behind the, the spires on the left. We grabbed a couple of selfies uh, before we started the hike. At the trailhead we weighed our packs which is a little bit of a downer. My pack was supposed to be about 25 pounds, I was thinking maybe 30 pounds max, and it ended up being 42 pounds. Lauren's pack was supposed to be under 25 pounds and ended up being 34 pounds. Uh, looking at the map, we started at Whitney Portal and headed up to Outpost Camp at about 10,500 feet. It's about a 3.1 mile hike. Uh, maybe 3.4 actually. Uh, and then uh, the next day on Wednesday morning, we hiked to trail camp at about 11,500 feet, and that is uh, about 3.1 miles. On Thursday morning, we started at four o'clock and headed up to Trail Crest, and that's about 13,500 feet, and that took us an, about four hours. We got there at eight o'clock in the morning and then headed up to the summit and that's about about a two mile hike 1.9 miles from the john muir trail uh, we get, arrived at the summit at about 11 15 11 30 and then turned around and, and came back uh, down to trail camp we got to trail camp about six o'clock uh, in the evening uh, we spent the night there, and then in the morning, the wind had picked up overnight. It was blowing 30, gusting 40, uh, and it was, it was actually quite exciting coming down off the mountain in that much wind. I uh, got down about 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, caught a shower at the Mount Whitney Hostel, and then headed out for lunch. We shot some videos with a GoPro camera. I apologize in advance for some of the wind noise and other unprofessional uh, sounds that you might hear. Uh, hopefully you can bear with us. So we're here um, on Tuesday morning about 11 o'clock. We're getting started. We just um, started weighing our packs over at this uh, scale over here. It didn't work out very well. <laughs> it turned out that uh, my pack was, I, I was trying to keep it at 25, then figured that maybe I'd try for uh, around 30, and I guessed, worst case scenario, it would be 30, what, 37? 39. 39 would be the worst case. It ended up being 42. And Lauren's, we were trying to keep under 25. And what did yours end up being? 34. 34, okay. So we're not doing so well on that. Um, we just talked to some uh, people that uh, were just day hiking here. And they said that there was a group that got snowed in last night at 
uh, Lone Pine Lake, and they said it was snow up to what their waist? About, about their waist. So we're not entirely sure how well this is going to go <laughs> in the beginning. We're optimistic, but not uh, sure about really anything. Oh, Keep going. <laughs> you like carrying a kid on your back. Can I go? Yeah. So, right out of the gate, it's very obvious that we're carrying a lot of weight, it's high altitude, and it's uphill. See, Lauren has her crampons and her ice axe, and we've got gators ready to go. So we should be reasonably set if the snow's not too deep. So we got Lauren trying to do this, and the goal is don't get your feet in the water. See how it goes. So here's our first snow that we're hiking on. We're not, we're not on it yet, I guess. We're just hiking by it. Of course, Lauren is playing with the snow already. Hey, darn, there's going to be plenty of this. Lauren, there's going to be plenty. We're taking a little break, a little water break, and uh, Lauren was reflecting on what she's glad she brought, what she's appreciating. What are you appreciating? I appreciate my hat and my poles. That's it, really. <laughs> That's the only thing you appreciate? <laughs> it's, um, really easy to th think that it's going to be easy but it is work even though the trail is uh, pretty smooth and and the uh, incline is not too bad uh, coming up here still is work at altitude and we're making it we've been about an hour into it now so maybe two miles hopefully we'll be getting to Lone Pine Lake in a bit So, 
this is what it's like right now, kind of getting up to Lone Pine Lake. The steepness is a little bit rough because we're not really on the trail. We're on a, a path that has been cut out. So it goes up a little bit steeper. Um, if you look just behind me here, that's Lone Pine Lake, the rim of it. You can just see the granite on the uh, west rim of the lake. So we're gonna keep plugging away, going up the, the slope here. We don't have our crampons on yet because there's pretty much holes that have been cut into the, the snow here. Pretty good from people's boots. So we don't need the crampons yet. But the poles really help. They make a big difference. Making you feel more comfortable. So this is in the trees, heading up towards Lone Pine Lake. We're getting closer every step. Okay, we're still not to Lone Pine Lake yet. It's pretty tough. Right when you think it's getting easy, it gets steeper. You got to go up something that you'd rather not have to go up. So we missed Lone Pine Lake, but this is outpost camp. And uh, if we can find running water that we can use for cooking, that'd be great. Otherwise, we're going to get stuck with Rocks. We'll see how that goes. We'll walk down to the other end of this meadow slash lake and see if we can find something good. All right, so this is uh, putting the tent together, and we have to use these snow anchors to. Um, anchor the tent down because the normal um, anchors that you put in the dirt don't work. So that'll be about here. set up now and uh, we've collected water and we've started um, gravity filtering the water and Lauren is inside the tent and she's working out um, our sleeping arrangements so she's getting the sleeping pads ready and she's getting sleeping bags out and she's taking care of everything in there um, the Sun as you can see is just just gone down um, over the the peaks.
beautiful. It's a, it's a little cool now that uh, the sun's gone down, but while the sun's up, the infrared from the sun is great. It keeps you really warm. Um, didn't need to have a jacket on until the sun, sun just went down. Well, we're gonna cook dinner now and uh, stay in the tent to try to stay warm. Okay, we're uh, in the tent now and we're trying to uh, get our cooking stuff ready to go. And I am having um, mac and cheese and Lauren is having, or are you having mac and cheese too? Oh, this is mine. I'm having teriyaki chicken. Oh, Lauren's having teriyaki chicken. This is what it looks like looking outside the tent. Got our shoes. Hopefully they'll dry by morning. So, we packed up camp. We're on day two. Going up the steep slope just above outpost camp. A little bit slow going. Today we got our crampons on, so it makes our traction quite a bit better. It's much easier to uh, plant your feet here and get where you wanna go without slipping. about what it's like going up to trail crest but we definitely benefited from sleeping the night at 10,500 it makes this uh, quite a bit easier than if we tried to do this yesterday all right so we're at mirror lake here it uh, has started to thaw so we got to go across on this log this is where the trekking poles really are advantageous so Lauren did a good job there so we need to get to the top of that so we're gonna take this Kind of rock area over here pick up a ridge line and then we'll take that ridge line up and just to the left of that a big peak over there okay so we're up above mirror lake now on the ridge line leading to trail camp and this is what it looks like lauren says that the frozen girl does makes this look a lot easier then it really is. The frozen girl, and she, the frozen girl did it in a dress. Singing. Singing. So, I took a little break here on this rock. It's about uh, 1230. We're already up at uh, trail camp, so there's no real reason to, to run around. So we took a break. And that's where we came from, down there. And you can probably see now up that way. That's the chute. You might be able to pick out. The, um, the trail that's been cut up the center of the chute. They've actually done a nice trail where it's zigzagging, so it's not quite as hard to get um, up that. That'll probably take us about two to three hours tomorrow to get up. All right, well, we're finally at trail camp. We're very happy. Woohoo! 
you can see up in the distance that way, that's the um, chute that we're gonna be going up. And I, I talked about it before, but there's looks like there's some good switchbacks that are gonna make that nice. We got pretty lucky. We're the only ones here, um, at least right now. There'll probably be some more people who get here about five. It's about um, one o'clock right now. But we got this great terra firma. No snow on it. This is, uh, after last night sleeping on the snow, that was pretty cold. Um, this is much easier to deal with. You don't have to be so um, careful with everything that you do. So, pretty happy about that. We're also pretty happy that our backpacks are off and uh, we get to relax a little bit. But uh, Lauren got pretty sunburned. Look at her, look at her neck. She's looking pretty bad. She's worried about prom. And she's wearing her hair up. Apparently that's a big deal. Her hair's up and she's sunburned. And I think her hands are sunburned too. Hands are all sunburned. In the sun, it's really hot. Um, sweating hot. Coming down on your face, very, very hot. But uh, as we saw last night, the minute the sun goes away, it is, we're in the snow. We know we're, we're not uh, on the beach. It's pretty cool. Okay, GoPro. Do one more turn around so you can see the area. It's beautiful. Oh, you can see Mount Whitney. No. So that's Mount Whitney. Just up and to the right. The very the back peak is back there. Up and to the right is uh, Mount Whitney. And these are the sawtooth spires that are going up. We'll hike on the back side of these. We'll hike up to the um, saddle right there, the trail crest, about 13,500. We'll go behind those peaks and um, head up to the summit. Although we've been hearing some reports of uh, pretty um, heavy snow up there, um, going through snow up over your waist. Um, and that might be a little bit much for us. Uh, nobody's made it to the summit um, in the last couple of days. Uh, there's a guy we met down at the bottom, a Pacific Crest Trail hiker. Two guys and, and one girl has joined them. And they're pretty adamant that they uh, make it uh, to the summit. So we're hoping that they're going to uh, forge the trail for us and uh, we don't have to do as much post hole um, work to forge that trail. I'll talk about that tomorrow. All right, so we're uh, kind of getting together with a couple of groups here. Um, you can see the sun is just on the peaks up above us, even on trail crest. together and ready to start hiking at about four o'clock so we have crunchy snow to walk on so we're not falling through. Should be good. Alright so we've taken off um, early this morning um, about 4.15 we walked out of camp and now we're walking up the chute that we showed you yesterday in the dark we only have one headlamp that works good so Lauren is using that headlamp and then I can see from her um, try to shine it up here a little bit more so I can Oh, it's not working at all. There we go. Okay. So this is what it looks like to walk up the trail. So you walk ahead. So 
that's what it looks like. Go to the left. Go to the left. I think, I think you want to go to the left. Yeah, but he went straight up. Let's just go straight. No, you go ahead. I want to record. No, not all the way. starting to warm up going up this hill gets us warmer all right we've made it up a little bit higher sun still hasn't come over the horizon that's Lauren hasn't come over the horizon but you can see uh, you can't see Whitney anymore it's up behind that peak we're climbing with um, Larry He's a Pacific Crest Trail through hiker and we're headed up the chute right here. And maybe take us another half an hour, 45 minutes to get up to the top. That's about the pace that we walk up this hill. I'm not using an ice axe yet because it's not steep enough to need it. The poles are more sturdy. Alright, it's getting a little bit higher on the sunrise. Start to see it just about to come over. And this is where we're going. There's sunrise. Beautiful. We got up to the first switchbacks that the the guys before us did. It makes it so much easier to climb. Okay, so we finally made it to Trail Crest. This is where we uh, meet up with the John Muir Trail. And you can see what it looks like down over the edge. That's uh, where we were planning to come up in uh, June, but uh, it's looking less likely because the road is closed. And there's a lot of snow. It's all good snow from that storm. And this is where we came back over on the other side. So that's where we just came from up the trail. This is the trail that comes up from John Muir. You can barely see Larry. He's right at the corner, right around that corner is the John Muir Trail. And then looking down this way is Guitar Lake, right about there. And then Crabtree Meadows off in the distance. So clearly you can see a lot of snow, but uh, there is a trail you can see Right off down that line right there, there's a trail that's coming up. It's moving up through the snow. And then you come up that path right there. You can see the path coming up the like that. And it beats up with the John Muir Trail over where Larry is. Right there. Gonna make 
this quite a bit more difficult. So we're trying to get as close as we can to the summit, which is off in the distance up there. That's where we gotta go. So there is parts of the trail here at about maybe almost 14,000 feet that uh, are already dry. So if we didn't have that last storm, we'd actually be in relatively good shape. We wouldn't have uh, such a snow effort. So over there, you can see the chute that we just came up and you can make out the main trail go running diagonal across that whole ridge about 100 or 200 feet below the surface or below the uh, ridge line we came up to shoot you can just barely make out our switchbacks that we made up Now we're going this way. Lauren is gonna lead up this thing. So this is a little bit bit sketchy. That's what's down the hill. But we become pretty comfortable with our balance. And we're being careful as we go through here. We don't have a heavy pack on, so it makes it easier to balance. Okay, so now we can really see the summit. You can actually see the hut. If you're really careful, look up towards the peak there, you can see the hut. But unfortunately, we made a little bit of headway, but now we gotta go downhill again, which means we have to go uphill again. So we're gonna walk through this little section here. Very carefully.
an interesting section here. You can look down. The east face, or the east canyons where we came up, and then you can look down here on the west side. And luckily there's no snow right now on this one little section because this can get very narrow. I've been on this before where both sides there was only maybe a, a one foot path between that between falling on both sides. So we've got really good conditions now. And that's looking down into Crabtree Meadows down that way and then up to the summit. Summit, Mount Whitney, May 11, 2017, and Lauren is uh, taking a picture. There wasn't a signing book, so we signed our names on a sticker that was in there. So Lauren's taking a picture so we don't forget it. And you can see in here the hut has uh, been full of snow. And over this direction, is the edge. You can see the chute. You can see the chute over there. And then over the edge here. hike up to the actual summit where the um, the USGS little stamp is we'll memorialize it it's over here somewhere Lauren Might be in snow. Oh, there it is. So here are peak. So. here they couldn't make up their mind We lost the trail, we're looking for the trail. Don't get too close to the edge if that's an edge.
So going downhill for me is a lot more challenging because the snow has warmed up and I'm falling deep at least to my knee in the snow. So every step is like Russian roulette. And of course, Lauren, 17 year old teenager, doesn't look back for dad. She's already down. She hasn't looked back one time. And I'm way up here on the mountain. You can see her, maybe you can see her down there. She's a little dot down there. So we're coming back down. This is one of the ridges that you have to walk on. Be careful not to really fall either way. It would be bad. So that's the trail we're gonna go on right now. All right, so we have brutalized ourselves from about 12 o'clock until now, four o'clock, post holing down from the summit. This is our last turn we have to make. As you can see up there, the trail goes right around that nose over that cliff. It's a little bit dicey, but what a beautiful, Day it's turned out to be. These are some of our memory shots that we took uh, during the trip. This is Lauren uh, on the first day heading up to Outpost Camp. Uh, this is a photo of us uh, tucked away in our bags, uh, sleeping on the snow. A bit, chi a bit chilly for the uh, first night. A selfie heading up to trail camp. Lauren was pretty happy uh, when we finally got to trail camp. Uh, it was a relatively easy day uh, because our packs were so much lighter after we ditched um, about 90% of our food and, and most of the other um, unnecessary gear that we overpacked on the way up. This is me pointing to the chute and the 33 switchbacks that Lauren counted uh, in the snow leading up to trail crest at 13,500 feet. This is a great shot. The sunrise uh, in the morning as we were going up the chute was really amazing. Uh, pink hues uh, all over the snow. Really spectacular. And then the glow of the morning sun uh, on the chute, looking up to the summit there at Trailcrest. Uh, this is a picture of me talking to my GoPro, trying to get it to do what I want. Uh, at the summit, they didn't have the uh, typical book where you can sign uh, maybe too early in the season. So we ended up just signing our names on a sticker to memorialize our trip. This is a nice picture looking down from Trail Crest at what the snow looked like. This is the two of us. Uh, pretty happy that we finally made it to Trail Crest. That was quite a bit of, of a climb. And at the summit, Lauren really gutted it out and made it all the way there. It was pretty tough. We had forgotten our food uh, at trail camp and so Lauren was the first one to run out of energy and it really hit her hard. I ended up bumming an energy bar off another climber who had uh, come up the mountaineer route and uh, gave that to Lauren and she bounced right back in about 30 minutes like an energizer bunny and ran down the hill ahead of me. I, uh, on the other hand, suffered quite a bit. I, I bonked with no energy uh, on the way down and, and it really took uh, a toll. I ended up getting back to camp at 6 o'clock in the evening with 
not even enough energy to chew the energy bar that we had stashed away at, at camp. We actually didn't have uh, any dinner because we kind of planned to go all the way down and we had left our food at the lower camp. So we didn't have anything but an energy bar for that night. This is Lauren uh, sitting back and looking at the view and the two of us at the hut, 14,000 feet. The video extras are the daddy-daughter trip that I took with Lauren's sister, Kirsten, in 2005. We reached the summit on July 13th, 2005. This is the two of us. We took a little bit different route uh, going up the uh, west side, starting at Horseshoe Meadows. You can see us standing there in our bug nets. There were so many mosquitoes. Without the bug nets, it would have been just horrible. This is Kirsten uh, at Chicken Spring Lake, uh, just past uh, Cottonwood Pass. We ended up uh, uh, calling on a satellite phone to my wife, Patty, to convince a, a horse uh, team to come back with mules and, and horses to pick us up and take us down the road for two days on these horses. Uh, this, this trip, uh, just like uh, the one with Lauren, we overpacked and, and it was just too heavy to carry. So we were lucky enough to get horses to take us down the trail for two days. This was a, a dream for Kirsten at eight years old to have her own horse and be able to get it to go where she wanted it was fantastic. The horse and mule team dropped us off at Guitar Lake, about 11,500 feet. And the two of us uh, got our stuff ready and, and started hiking up the trail to Trailcrest. Here you can see we, I was hiking with a, a backpack with legs, little little legs that came out of the bottom of this backpack and carried carried the weight up the trail. Kirsten was great. She made it uh, all the way to the summit. Here is uh, the approach up to the the trail um, some or the summit trail. We ended up uh, not being able to make it uh, all the way to the summit on the first day so we camp just below trail crest at about 13 almost 13,500 feet and we we got there a little bit late in the afternoon and there just wasn't anywhere for us to, to camp so we set up our tent right on the trail and uh, just so we didn't make anybody upset we woke up early in the morning and, and got on our way most of the time there's snow um, in patches up towards the summit uh, this year uh, there was quite a bit of snow actually uh, as we got up towards the summit. We took our pictures at the USGS um, stamp and got the same picture that Lauren and I got uh, at the hut. This time uh, Kirsten had uh, the opportunity to sign her name in the book and we camped uh, on the summit. Uh, there was these wind blocks that we used to, to do that. It gave us the opportunity to wake up in the morning to a beautiful sunrise and get a great picture. Coming down the front side towards Whitney Portal, got this picture at trail camp. And then the backpack with legs made it over the log bridges without falling in and we got our final photo at Whitney Portal Trailhead.